Hi and welcome to this video which is about my Auric projects and today it's an update on something called Auric Art, joystick interfacing and a Arduino SD interface. So the first thing I wanted to show is the actual setup. Um, what you see on the screen there is just my D flat ROM which is a custom ROM for the Auric now running on a Auric Atmos. So there's the Auric Atmos and here's the original Auric 1 that I've been testing it on. But I've been doing some interfacing so I don't want to use my original Auric to try, try and do anything strange that might break it. And I want to show three things today. So firstly is this thing called Auric Art. This ROM that's got bad Apple written on it, on it is actually a extension to the bus expansion of the Auric which allows me to host a number of different rods that I can select on startup and I'll show that in a minute. Uh, but in addition to that, we also have the printer port, which is the uh, normally for printing of course, but it actually has a number of data lines and I'll just show that here. The, um, the expansion port on the back of the Auric, the two key ones are the bus expansion and the printer port. The bus expansion gives more or less access to the 6502 address data, data and control lines, uh, but the printer port gives you eight data lines, a strobe and an acknowledge line. And what's going on here is that the uh, printer port is connected to this uh, breadboard, and this breadboard is doing two things. First, it's got an Arduino Pro Micro a Leonardo, an Arduino Leonardo type of microcontroller um, which is hosting an SD card uh, and also off that breadboard I've got to split out to essentially a joystick interface so here is a joystick interface for the Auric. Normally that plugs directly into the printer port but because I'm trying to connect both an Arduino and the joystick to the printer port I've just got the two things hooked off the back of the one set of lines and there's some arbitration and select to make sure only the right thing responds when required. So that's what is the setup. Let's talk about what that actually uh, means. Uh, firstly, in terms of the Arduino, what I've done is developed some software on the Arduino that in addition to the standard software that drives the SD card can also communicate with the Auric over the printer port. Uh, this has required me to develop a bespoke protocol basically to transfer data to and from the Auric and Arduino uh, whilst maintaining some level of synchronization. And the way I've done that is essentially going back to the diagram here, the eight data lines are used to send data to and from the Arduino. Uh, actually the way it works is that the D7 and D6 and D5 lines are used to select either the joystick or the Arduino and then the D4, D3, D2, D2 D1, D0 are used to transmit and receive data. Uh, in particular, D4 is used by the Arduino to signal to the Auric when it's ready. So that means D0 to D3 is used for data transfer, so that's half a byte at a time essentially. So one nibble at a time is what I can transfer to and from. What those nibbles are and how they work is based on a custom protocol that I've had to build so that the Arduino can understand what the Auric would like to do. So for example, if I want to uh, put a directory out, I can type DIR and what's happening there is that the Auric is actually taking the um, the Auric is actually sending a command for DIR to the Arduino. The Arduino is listening and then coming back with some bytes to output to the screen which is what the Auric is doing there. And then of course if I want to load a file, I can use for example tload. So if I do tload 
and then maybe I'll do I have to select the device now so S means SD card and T means tape and then I can load a program so music.prg and there what the object's done is sent a command to the Arduino uh, to tell it to load music.prg and then it's transferring a block at a time and it's done it so it's much faster than tape because this is the program that's just been loaded so you can see it's quite a lot quicker than having to load from tape let's go dir again and how does this work well on the arduino there is a c++ program which is monitoring the uh, monitoring the data lines of the printer port and then um, responding in kind based on what commands it's receiving through the nibble at a time transfer and um, over here this laptop here is just hosting the program so I don't know whether you can really read that but essentially there are a few commands there you can see uh, initialize open read open write close directory delete wait for a select get the command save a byte load a byte these are the key functions that are built on the Arduino. So, having done that, the other interface, or the other device that is interfaced here, as I mentioned, is the joystick. So the joystick is selected by pulling the strobe line low. So going back to the diagram here, the strobe line is pulled low, meaning that a device on the printer port is being selected and then D6 and D7 selects which device and 00 on D6 and D7 selects the Arduino but any of any other bit set here selects one of the joysticks on the joystick interface and the joystick interface itself has some logic so that it only responds when strobe is low and one of D6 or D7 is uh, also active. So that's how the, the the joystick is selected and I can just show how that works by printing out the value of the, the stick command. Normally the stick command just gives you easy access to the cursor keys and the spacebar and that's acting as the directional and the fire button. Um, but with the joystick connected the D-flat ROM now automatically detects when the joystick is connected so here's the joystick and if I left right or left sorry right up down and fire so these are just the bits I've got auto fire on which is what's doing that these are just the bits that are returned by the joystick interface so it means I can actually uh, access both these these devices through the printer port um, so that now gives me fairly fast mass storage access uh, to uh, the using the SD card through the Arduino. So let's do another directory listing. Um, there's a number of other programs there which I will demonstrate in a moment. But before I do that, I want to demonstrate the Oricart. So the Oricart was sent to me, and indeed so was the IGK joystick interface, sent to me by another Oric hardware and hacker fan. Uh, Rax ISS, thank you very much, Rax, for your for your kind uh, donation. Um, and it's a brilliant piece of kit because if I just reboot the Oric, so I'm just powering off and on. You've actually got an entire BIOS that um, first kicks in through the ROM on the expansion bus. If I press space. What you can see here is I've got a number of ROMs. It's actually a 512k ROM. So when, the, when you consider that the Auric itself normally has 16k of ROM, uh, it really gives you a lot of options. Uh, this is only a little bit of what you can do with it. But you can see here I can pick from Basic 1.0, which is the original Auric 1 Basic. Then there's Basic 1.1, which is the Auric Atmos Basic with some bug fixes. Um, Pravets, which is the Bulgarian clone of the Auric, and then there's a couple of diagnostic and test, and even fourth, 
can be selected directly from the ROM and also a game of chess. So let's set, select D flat again, press enter and there we are back into D flat. Let's do a DIR. So let's see um, what can we do with the mass storage device. I've got a number of files here, dot bin files, these are image files and I've also got a program called gallery. So let's load the gallery program. TAP, the extension doesn't really matter, but anyway, I've called it dot tap. It's loaded it, it's not a very long program, so there it is. And all it's doing is loading different images um, into memory um, and waiting a little bit, then going to the next one. So it's basically a little slideshow. So let's run it by entering test. And um, if you might remember these images if you're as old as me and like science fiction. And these are some images from a famous sci-fi book, uh, which is about spacecraft. It's by Stuart Crowley. And uh, I remember thumbing through these pictures as a kid uh, very enthusiastically, and it's always stuck with me. So this is the some of the iconic pictures I remember, rendered in 240 by 200 resolution on the Auric. Um, a little bit grainy, but hey, I think it's good enough actually, and I can tell what these pictures are, even at this resolution, from, and compare it back to the original book, which I, which I think I've got somewhere. But uh, the one that's coming up, I think, next is my favourite one. This is the Hornet, and it's Ace. And it looks pretty good, actually. Um, and then there's another one coming after this skyscraper, one that I've just shown here. Um, no, not this one. This is a construction spaceship. Um, oh, yes, this was... I think this was called the Cutlass, and it was a really dynamic picture. I remember these names of these some of these spaceships. This was called Fat Boy, I believe, um, and this was probably the coolest one. It's called the Orion, if my memory serves me right. I'm sure some will remember better than me. And then this is called the Astrolab. So that's a demo of the the gallery loading high-res pictures. Each of these pictures is about 8K in size, so if you do the timing, it takes about 4 seconds to load a picture. So I'm getting about 2K per second transfer rate, which I think is actually okay. It's, uh, it's, it's perfectly good enough for using on D-flat. So I'll just break out of that, go back to text mode, um, there's the program there's the directory listing and um, the next piece is going to be to load Tetris so let's just uh, new the program and then to load Tetris from the SD card and this takes a while the main reason it takes a while is not the SD card but actually what's happening here is that the programming is being loaded in as if it was text and then D flat is having to decode the text and tokenize it um, and put it into memory. So each block here is 256 bytes, but it does take some time then to decode those bytes into tokenized lines. And the tokenization is there to improve the performance of D flat. Um, so this is going to take a while. So I'm going to pause it briefly and come back when it's done. So it's just downloaded 41 blocks uh, of 256 bytes, so what's that, about 10k. Um, and here's the program. And let's just start it. So I'm going to be able to use the joystick, even though this... I'll turn the music off because it's awful. But even though this program was written before the joystick option 
became available because of the way that D-flat auto detects the joystick and then the stick command is uh, then using the joystick rather than the keys for inputs. It means that without changing any code in this game, I'm obviously able to play with the joystick. So here's the joystick again. I'll press fire. And there we go. You can see it's obviously being controlled. You can probably hear me playing with the joystick. Um, rotating. And this is written in D flat, which means it's fully interpreted. It tokenizes the inputs to speed up the interpretation process during runtime. But it's running on a 1 MHz ORIC in a basic like language and now works with this joystick thanks to again to racks for racks iss for helping me with providing a copy of the oricart rom and the oricart hardware plus the igk interface which has allowed me to test the flat on it and then create this new version of the flat that works with a custom Arduino program. Um, all of this is on GitHub already, so if you're still with me at this point, it's quite a long video, sorry for that, but uh, hopefully um, if you're still with me, it's because you were quite interested in what I've been doing. So thank you very much for watching my video.